Hey, Boyan here. I'm super happy we are going to do this masterclass together today. One thing before I start, my look is going to jump between the computer screen and you, just to make sure that I don't skip anything relevant. All right? So, uh, I've been a huge fan of usability tests. They are one of the best things designers can do to improve their work. And this is what I'm focusing on today, uh, on how we can improve our work as a designer, rather than talking about how we can do the usability tests to improve the products for the startups and companies. You see, if you're a serious startup or an established company, you have to invest, invest a, little, a little bit more time into the uh, prototype test because you have to create it, uh, a realistic prototype in terms of having all interactions in place, uh, call to actions, and just have to feel realistic. On the other hand, what we're going to do today, I'm going to show you the prototype that consists of the wireframes and I didn't focus on, uh, you know, creating the final interface look. So, which means uh, less time has been invested, but still it's enough for us to see whether our prototype is usable enough and whether there are some major UX flaws. Why is this important? Because the more we do it, the more times we repeat the tests, the better we become at embracing mentality that feedback matters. And this is one of the crucial things is as uh, you know, in our journey to become a great designer. I'm going to run a real usability test on a person who hasn't seen the prototype so far. So this is really important because it's going to be a real uh, usability test. And I'm going to test out whether the prototype I designed is usable enough for her to complete the tasks that I will ask her to do. But before we jump on a computer and do the test, let me just cover some basics of the usability test. So what is a usability test? As the name tells us, uh, it's a tool to measure the usability and it can be the usability of anything. The most common thing that the product creators do in our industry is testing the web or app prototype. To explain it in a simple way, the usability test is observing how other people interact with your product or prototype. And the important word here is observing. To validate something, it's not enough just to explain the features to the people and then ask them if you know, they would use these features. Uh, you have to show the product to them, you have to show the prototype and you have to observe how they interact with the prototype. Uh, and this will give you valuable insights into whether you whether they understand your product or future product. One thing to note here is you are not going to measure whether they like your product, but that's not even goal here. The goal is to measure the usability. Do we need to develop the prototype? The closer you can get the prototype to look like a real product, the more accurately you can predict whether people will understand your product. However, this doesn't mean that you have to write thousand lines of code. In fact, you don't have to write a single line of code. And yet so many people have built the product from scratch, spent thousands of dollars on it, and then figure out they have to throw everything out because they haven't tested in the first place. If they would have done so, they would have saved a lot of time and money along the way. And as I said, in this masterclass, I'm going to test the prototype with the wireframes. So again, I didn't even spend the time on the final interface look. And the beautiful thing about this type of test is that you don't need to spend a lot of resources. The point is to test as quickly as possible and even a rough and undeveloped prototype can get the job done. But it's very important that the prototype is interactive. This means if I'm holding the prototype in my hand, I'm you know tapping through the screens. If I tap the button, something needs to happen. This means there has to be some kind of interaction. It doesn't have to be a fancy interaction for our purpose that we are trying to achieve today, uh, but it still, it has to happen something in front end. In the back end, it doesn't need to happen anything, right? Because we don't need a single line of code. Uh, but you will see in the test later on, uh, the wireframes I designed, not all of the interaction has been made. So the important ones that I wanna test, those have been made. And this is enough for what we are trying to build today. With the tools like Bravo Studio, you can do the testing in a very simple way. Uh, what they do is they help you turn your designs into the native mobile app. And this is kind of the flexibility and freedom you want as a designer because it allows you to deliver great looking interface and smooth UX without a single line of code. 
and you can import your design from a design tool. So if you wanna test your prototype uh, with real users, uh, uh, you know, the high fidelity prototype that's realistic, Bravo Studio, it's kind of a really great choice here. The next question, how many people we need to recruit? I would say somewhere around five tests would give you enough insights whether your designs has some uh, major usability flaws and you will see the pattern what works great and what doesn't work great. Do we need to explain the product? A lot of people do mistakes here because they think the more they explain the product, the better and more effective the test will be. And they go on by you know explaining the features and the problems they are solving. But the thing is, people will understand more product before they test, which is kind of cheating. What you need to do is you have to put the people in the real context. The point is, you have to provide just enough information. Uh, think about think about it. How much information do those people have before they download your app? Do we need to help during the test? The goal is to see how easy or how hard it is for people to complete the task. This means we need to give them enough space so they can explore on their own. Also, it's important they think out loud. For example, let's say she's trying to find a button on the interface or she's thinking, what do I need to do now? Those questions are really important because they provide insights into their mental mode, which is super important later on when we are going to see what are the patterns among the, uh, among the testers. So encourage them to think out loud. If they absolutely cannot figure out a way, give them a hint to complete the task or just move on with the test. What happens after the test? Well, you have to improve your designs. Uh, if you have done a good job taking the notes, you should see now what are the patterns among the testers and if your prototype has some major usability flaws or what worked great. But focus on what doesn't work great, improve this in design and repeat the test. In fact, keep repeating as long as you don't have the testers being able to complete the task smoothly. Okay, we've covered some basic. Now let's jump over to the computer and do the test. First of all, I would like to thank Tamara for taking the time to do the tasks for us. Uh, I want you to feel comfortable, so feel free to take your time to settle in. And in the meantime, I'm going to explain you shortly how this test is going to look like. I'm going to give you five tasks and ask you to complete each of those tasks. I might ask you some questions along the way uh, in terms of, you know, what did you feel about the process? Uh, what's really important here is that, it, that there is no right or wrong answers and I want you to be brutally honest with everything. Take your time for each task, you don't, you don't have to be rushed and I want you to think out loud. This means if you have any questions or any thoughts during the process, just say it out loud. In, for example, where can I find the button, for example, just say it out loud because it's important for me to understand your mental process. Let me give you a bit of a context now. What we are doing is building the app that helps you take care of your plants you have at home or in, you know, in your garden. And I want you to imagine the following situation. You, you have you know, a bunch of plants at your home, you need to take care of them. Um, and your friend told you there is a great app uh, that helps you take care of your plants. So you downloaded this app and you added all your plants from your home in this app to make sure uh, that you are going to be guided through the process of taking care of those plants, right? You just need tips from this app. This is the context, like, is everything clear? You understand the situation? Yeah, yeah. Cool. So now I'm going to start with the first task. The first task is check what tasks you have for tomorrow to take care of your plants. So here I have do today and I click do tomorrow and that's all for tomorrow. Cool. So what did you think about the process of doing that? That was pretty easy to find. Okay, noted. The next task is, and listen, listen to me carefully, you have some problems with your avocado in your living room and you would like to talk with an expert to solve an issue. How would you do that? Okay, let me check. Mm, living room? So I guess it's here, avocado, I click here, 
Okay, I don't know now. Ah, talk to expert. I will click here and would write a message. Cool. So what did you think about this process? Uh, that was a bit more complex than the previous one okay. uh, and I didn't uh, see the button at, at the bottom uh, okay. right away. You didn't see it right away? Yeah, I didn't see it right away because I checked it first, everything else. Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay. Uh, the third task, again avocado, track the growth history height history you measured height in the you know so far with, uh, of your avocado okay. uh, uh, in the living room so i go to living room and to avocado uh, height and here i see growth okay cool any thoughts on that no nothing special that was also pretty clear yeah Okay, now imagine you are outside somewhere, in the nature or you know the streets, wherever, okay. and you spotted a really great looking plant. Okay. You want to identify it, you want to find out which plant this is. How can you do that in this app? Okay, so I would go maybe explore. Hmm. Mm, scan and identify the plant. Okay, and then I would just scan it. Yeah, you can tap the button. Oh, okay. And now because it's not doesn't automatically go to another screen, you can tap it, tap it again. Okay. Huh? Okay. Okay. Uh, so I I I noticed uh, a little bit of distraction when you landed on explore screen. What was uh, was something weird about it? Unusual? Mm, I think uh, this uh, this stuff already grabbed uh, my attention, so I didn't see the scan and identify the plan right away. Okay. Yeah, yeah I understand. Uh, and now the last task. Uh, uh, you can you can you can stay here. Okay. If you want. So, you would like to explore some plants, but you are allergic to some of them. Mm -hmm. So, you want to browse only through the ones that don't have any allergens. So, how do you do that? Okay, so here I see filters. So, I guess there should be something. Uh, avoid allergies. How to do this. Turn on if you're allergic and then show. Okay. So, what do you think about this one? Uh, I think that was uh, pretty easy. It was fast to find. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so since we have, uh, you know, uh, completed all of the tasks, you do you have any kind of feedback you want to give me or any thoughts on what you have experienced so far? Uh, I think the flow was pretty clear, pretty easy. Uh, maybe, well, I guess it would be different if already I would have some uh, images inside and it wouldn't be just wire, wire, wire friends. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and this is what I was also uh, talking before when I started this masterclass. We are doing the wireframes, uh, which means it's not completely realistic prototype, but still it gives you an idea whether the user flow is usable or not. And as Tamara said, when you have real photos, uh, some buttons would be probably, for example, like this one, see all my plans, right? Or if you go, if you go to explore, can you go back to explore? We have this button, scan and identify the plan. Um, in reality, maybe in the final look of the interface, this button would be more highlighted because we will have the plans that are, you know, the, the photos would be more colorful, colorful. So we will need to make sure that the call to actions are more highlighted. So. So yeah, uh, but anyway, we still get an idea how usable our user flow is and whether there is a pattern that we should be working on. Now, based on what I got from Tamara, I, what I would do is I would already now highlight 
this can identify the plant even in the wireframes so when we will be in the user interface phase it will be more clear to us uh, you know okay this is a call to action we need to highlight it more so this is one of the takes i would you know take from this test but again if i do it with five more persons and let's say three out of them hesitated the same you know in the same way at the same point of the user flow there is definitely something that we need to uh, you know uh, uh, improve uh, so yeah that's it thank you for taking the time thank you. and uh, hopefully we will launch this product and you'll be able to use it yourself great thank you Okay, this was a test. As you can see, it was a pretty quick one. It doesn't require a big time investment, but it's really important you take notes down. And what you should be doing is also preparing the structure in advance. So during the test, you spend, uh, 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 you, don't, you don't need to spend uh, a lot of time taking the notes because you have to be focusing on, on what the tester is doing. So you can prepare the, let's say, the sheet in advance with the columns. For example, for the task number one, you have five different tasks and for each task, you can have the levels. How hard was it to, uh, you know, complete the task? But also you have to be providing your open thoughts. So uh, any kind of questions that appear during the test, any kind of thoughts that you think it's really important for this test, note this down for each task in each test. And, you know, this is how you will be able to recognize whether there is a pattern uh, across your tasks uh, in terms of how usable your prototype is and if there is a major UX flaws. So that's really important. One other thing I wanted to say is uh, you don't have to create digital interfaces. You, have, you, you can spend even less time on creating the prototypes in order to test them. Uh, uh, for example, pen and paper is a great method. Just draw some user flows, uh, user flows uh, uh, with your pen it doesn't have to be a great looking interface it can be honestly it can be a, an ugly interface uh, just make sure you provide enough elements uh, you know in a way that's clear for the user what each element uh, means uh, but then you can test whether you are on the right track of uh, you know specific when you're designing specific user flow you can create for example uh, a uh, you can lay down the papers a4 papers and each a4 paper can be let's say one app one app screen, you can lay them down in front of you on a desk or on a wall and then ask person to use their fingers to move through the user flow. It's going to provide you a very valuable insights in a really quick way without even having to uh, design digitally. So uh, why is this important? As I said in the beginning of the video, the sooner we start embracing the mentality that feedback really matters, the sooner we can become great designers. And that's what it's all about, right? We have to learn the way to listen to people and, and observe how they interact with our uh, prototypes. That's really important. I can't actually, I cannot highlight enough how important this is. So thank you for your time today. Thank you for your attention. I hope it was useful to you. If you have any question, uh, reach out to me via Instagram. I will be happy to help you out. Uh, thanks to Bravo Studio as well for having me here and talk to you soon.